Hello and welcome everyone, Anf Wolf here bringing you a new Let's Play of Star Wars The Old Republic, developed by Bioware and published by LucasArts and EA, also known as Electronic Arts. Most people I imagine who come to my channel already know what Star Wars The Old Republic is all about, but if you're unfamiliar, then I'll give you a brief um, overview. It is a sci-fi fantasy MMO or a massive multiplayer online RP, RPG or role-playing game and I've done a fair few playthroughs of this for my channel and this again as you can probably no doubt tell from the wallpaper I borrowed from the internet is going to be another Jedi Knight storyline. Now I have done a Jedi Knight playthrough before but I only got to the end of the first story arc, the end of chapter 1 and due to i think it was mostly personal reason reasons at the time i ended up putting that playthrough on hold and what usually happens after you've taken a break for too long i wasn't really motivated to pick it back up but recently i have done a let's talk video for december and i saw i said i was in a bit of a slump and someone did actually ask if i was going to play the newest uh, Star Wars The Old Republic expansion which is known as Knights of the Eternal Throne that was just released maybe a week or so ago um, at, at the time I'm actually recording this video and it kind of put me in the mood to rather than just play the expansion and explore the storyline start afresh and maybe take a new character all the way through into the expansions, all the way to the new content, and see what I think. Because the expansion before this, um, Knights of the Fallen Empire, I think it was called, that was released uh, back end of 2015, changed a lot of the game mechanics, or changed them enough that some of the things were unfamiliar to me, and some of the things I had to rediscover for myself. And I have had a brief look at... Um, version 5.0 as it's known as which is the expansion like version that's now now being used and they have changed a few things some things maybe for the better some things for the worse obviously i'll let people who play the game more more religiously than i do decide but i thought it'd be interesting to start again and even though i do have a trooper lp kind of in the works like my previous jedi knight uh, Jedi Knight I should say it's kind of fallen by the wayside and even though I desperately want to pick it up it may not happen I've also been tempted to do a bounty hunter LP once again but by the by that's just me rambling now we're ready here to start a new playthrough and I am honestly looking forward to it now a few things before we begin as I tend to do for these playthroughs this will be a long let's play i plan to introduce spoilers so if you've never played this yourself and never played through the jedi knight storyline then be aware that if you are interested then watching this series will probably start will spoil the storyline for you depending on what choices i make because i imagine the end of the journey will be the same no matter what uh, actions we take some things depending on what we do may change little things here and there depending on how our companions react to some of our choices but in what i mean by a long lp is i'm looking to do not only just the storyline centric missions but obviously some of the world exploration missions we'll be visiting different worlds in the star wars universe and we will be assisting in the Galactic Republic's efforts on those worlds against the Sith Empire, which we'll obviously talk about when we actually get into character creation about the differences between the Galactic Republic and the Sith Empire at the moment. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this. In addition, I will again be using a set of, of, of adaptive armor Adaptive armor, rather than just picking up gear and checking its stats to see if it's better, adaptive armor you can swap and change the modifications, the parts that make up the armor internally, to make them make that armor better as your character levels up. Um, if you have the prerequisite level, you can equip higher level, more powerful um, 
modifications and make the armor better. And you used to buy these modifications with modif uh, commendations or what then they became known as crystals. But I think you can now buy the modifications just with in-game credits, the basic, the basic currency in the game. So that's one major change I saw immediately while I was preparing to do this LP. In addition, is there anything else I should mention? Obviously there is a new level cap, the level cap previously was 65 and level cap is now level 70. And yeah, apart from that I don't think there's anything else I really need to mention. Let's have a look here. I've got a little notepad in front of me. Um, no, I think that's it. Obviously I can speak more about what we're going to be doing when we actually get into character creation. So I will be just a moment and we'll actually get to creating our character. And I'll probably spend a few minutes talking about the Jedi Knight and their role in the Republic and our role in general. But that'll be more law friendly stuff as we're creating the character. So, I'll be just a moment. And welcomes back everyone. We're going to be playing on a European server. The European server I normally play on when I'm doing these uh, playthroughs. And uh, that server will of course be the Red Eclipse. And we're not going to be playing as my favourite character so far, the bounty hunter known as Valakar. Ah, I really should get back to playing Valakar though. As I mentioned, I've been tempted to do a female bounty hunter, but that's for perhaps the future, if I'm so motivated. Let us create a new character. We're going to be playing as a Jedi Knight, which is this icon here. This is an indication of your status. You'll see some people in the game with this um, Republic and Imperial mashup sign next to their name. And that is an indication that they've completed all eight of the individual story arcs for the, obviously, the main classes. Not including the advanced classes, of course, because each of these classes has two subsequent advanced classes you can play. But, um, yeah, we're doing uh, reasonably well. I think I've done all these as a playthrough. Yes, I have. Interesting. Okay, anyhow, we're not going to be playing as Valakar or Asura or Malcolm. I say, at the moment, uh, Leandra. Obviously, I haven't shown you any of the footage, but this is my trooper who is a work in progress. She's only level 20. She's a little baby character, but I will hopefully get back to playing as her in the future. But, anyhow, so let's create our Jedi Knight. Now, with the Knights of the Eternal Throne, you can start with a boosted character, starting at level 65, just to go through the Eternal Throne expansion. Or you can start with a level 60 character and go through the Knights of the Fallen Empire expansion and then the Knights of the Eternal, Eternal Throne. But we're going to be starting from the very beginning. Star Wars The Old Republic. Join the fight for the galaxy as you side with the Galactic Republic or the Sith Empire to embark on one of the eight exciting class stories. Before we begin, there are three major story arcs for each character, chapter 1, 2 and 3. And then you go into the expansions. Let me see if I can get these right. There is Rise of the Hut Cartel, which is Chapter 4. And then you have the Shadow of Revan expansion. And then I think there's like a, a filler between the Shadow of Revan expansion going into the Knights of the Fallen Empire expansion as well. But, yeah, well, hopefully, if this uh, playthrough goes well and I am motivated to do so, explore all of the expansions with this character. I've said it a few times about some of the other classes as well. It all depends on my mood. But, we're going to be starting from a puny baby at level 1, and hopefully getting all the way to level 70 at some point in this campaign, in this uh, Let's Play. So, let us begin we get to choose our allegiance. We get to play as a member of the Galactic Republic. Founded 20,000 years ago by explorers and diplomats, the Galactic Republic is a vast democracy led by the Supreme Chancellor. The Republic is a chaotic algorithm of many worlds, corporations and species which often clash with one another. And of course you have the Sith Empire. 
a rigid militaristic society where aliens are subjugated and the Sith Lords are supreme. The Empire is ruled by the mysterious, all-powerful Sith Emperor. To Imperial citizens, power is everything, and only the strongest ascend to glory. I should mention, um, because I haven't mentioned it yet in this uh, playthrough, this era of Star Wars The Old Republic is set about 3,000 years prior to the Star Wars movies that you're probably a lot more familiar with. Give or take a couple of centuries. And I think it's set, I think it's 300 years before, well sorry, 300 years after the, after the events of um, Knights of the Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2. Give or take a couple of decades again. But we will be encountering some, I suppose you could say bloodlines from Knights of the Old Republic in this uh, MMORG. But we're going to be playing as a member of the Galactic Republic. And now we get to choose our class. Now, one thing you'll immediately notice is in 5.0 and probably onwards, not only do you get to choose your starting class, your primary class, I suppose you could call it, but you now get to choose your advanced class right from the go. The Jedi Guardian and the Jedi Sentinel. Now, you don't get to change your mind once you choose one of these advanced classes. You have different discipline trees within this class. So for example the Jedi Guardian. A Jedi Guardian can be both a tank character who tries to gain aggro for his party members and has a lot more uh, abilities that boost his survivability as well as dealing damage. And a Jedi Guardian can also be a damage dealer. A Jedi Sentinel, on the other hand, is in each discipline tree, it's all about dealing damage. And each discipline tree focuses on a slightly different aspect of how you do that. For this playthrough, I've been humming and hawing between these over the past maybe 48 hours. And I think we're going to be playing as a Jedi Sentinel. The major difference between them is a Jedi Guardian is... A, obviously a Jedi who wields a single lightsaber and normally in their offhand they have some form of generator or focus or shield which allows them to absorb a percentage of damage rather than taking it directly to their HP, their health. A Jedi Sentinel on the other hand wields dual sabers, one in each hand. So, technically they should deal more damage, but it depends on how you build your character. Let's see, a Jedi Sentinel. Control, of fo control and focus are the hallmarks of the Sentinel. Through years of training, the Sentinel learns the art of using two lightsabers simultaneously to create an intricate web of damage that is almost impossible to evade. Let's have a look at what we can learn about the Sentinel. Various abilities, advanced classes, obviously this tells you that obviously the Guardian can be a tank or damage dealer, whereas the Sentinel's purely damage. What they wield, what armors they can wear. A Guardian can wear heavy armor, whereas the Sentinel's only able to wear medium. Combat role. Following the teachings from generations of Jedi Battle Masters, Sentinels have become an unmatched force on the battlefield. Wielding two lightsabers with expert precision, the Sentinel can overpower the enemy with unrelenting strikes that dismantle the stoutest defences and bring the fiercest foes to their knees. The Sentinel's expertise makes equally quick work of a single target or a group of foes. And finally, the story. I will be reading a bit of this, so feel free, if you're familiar with it, to skip ahead. Vigilant, determined, guardian of peace. A symbol of hope in dark times, the Jedi Knight stands for the legacy of the Jedi Order. More than 20,000 years of protecting the Republic and keeping the peace across the galaxy. Though Jedi Knights have served as generals, guerrilla fighters and warriors for generations, their legendary combat prowess faces its greatest test during this age. 
Through years of disciplined training and meditation, the Jedi Knight hones body and mind in the perfect harmony. Combining the foresight of the Force with unrivaled reflexes and practice physical precision, the Knight turns combat into an art form, gracefully executing acrobatic feats in tandem with elegant lightsaber tactics. A source of inspiration to allies and intimidation to adversaries, the Jedi Knight's presence is welcome in any confrontation. The Order's long history of fighting for justice has earned a earned the trust of countless friends and hate to innumerable enemies. Few, though, are foolish enough to challenge a seasoned Ch Jedi Knight unless they have the skills and technology to even the odds. On facing the dark side. The Jedi's dark counterparts scored many victories during the war, expanding their empire and putting the Republic on the defensive. Since the Treaty of Coruscant, the Sith have consolidated their military might, while the Jedi have withdrawn the Typhon, a move that's been looked at uh, with suspicion by many of the Republic's politicians. Nevertheless, the war is far from over, and the Jedi Knight's resolve remains firm. With unwavering allegiance to the Republic and the light side of the Force, the Jedi Knight fights with valiant determination, wading into the thick of any battle to protect freedom and democracy, and to hold fast against those who oppose it. No matter how dire circumstances may become, the Jedi Knight trusts the Force to keep a cool head. Knowledge and self-control are the critical components of wise decisions, and emotional and mental clarity are an absolute necessity. Maintaining focus allows the Knight to rely on intuition. A right mind leads to the right action. For many, the Jedi Knight is a guardian of a precious dream, a dream of peace, a dream of justice, and a dream of a brighter future. The fate of the galaxy depends on the Knight's ability to keep this dream alive. Whew, that was a lot of talking. <laughs> About this Treaty of Coruscant, I think it's 10 years prior to the events that we're going to be playing through. The Sith Empire, under the guise of signing a treaty, I think it was under the, under the guise of signing a peace treaty with the Republic, launched an all-out assault on Coruscant, which is the Republic's capital world, basically bombarding the planet from orbit while the Sith users of the dark side attacked and basically raised the Jedi Temple on Coruscant the Rubble. Which is why most of the Jedi now have withdrawn to one of their like, kind of spiritual worlds of Typhon. Which is where we'll be starting our adventure. It's kind of the prologue world for both the Jedi Knight and the Jedi Consular. Whereas the Smuggler and Trooper both start their adventure on the world of Old Mantel. But, yeah, we'll be playing as a Jedi Sentinel. And now we get to choose our species. Unlike a member of the Sith Empire, the Galactic Republic kind of look favorably on every race joining them. But the Sith Empire kind of either pre prefer humans or pure-blooded Sith to be members of their ranks. Aliens aren't looked upon well. But, for this playthrough, as you may have guessed from a couple of the images I used during the wallpaper phase when I was explaining what this LP was partially about, we'll be playing as a Togruta, a tribal species originating from an ancient planet. Togruta are mainly distinguished by their colourful montrals and distinctive facial patterns. Similar to the Twi'leks, though slightly different, they have almost what you'd call head ten tentacles, which is probably racist. Unlike the Twi'leks though, whose um, leku, like the, the tails, store part of their brains, the Togruta have hollow montrals, which are used for, I think it's echolocation. But uh, yeah, that's our choice. And now we get to select our gender. All of the different genders and classes you play as 
have different voice actors and actresses. For this playthrough, we're going to be playing as a female Togruta, and they, the Jedi Knight uh, female voice actress is, let me see if I can get this right. Is it, is it Carrie Walgren? I apologize, I doubt you're ever going to watch this video, but if I massacre your name, I do apologize. But um, I don't know, I haven't seen her or heard her do much voice acting, but I did quickly look up what she's done in the past, and she does have a, an extensive list, so yeah, we'll see how that works out. And we have already heard, I think it's Mark Mir who did the Jedi Knight male voice acting. I think it was Mark Mir anyway. A Jedi's limits must always be put to the test. Okay, so now we get to design or create the appearance of your character here. Now, I've already kind of been in I've dedicated my life to serving others. Thank you. I've already um, kind of pre-built my character, so if you just give me a moment. That's fine. Facial pattern, there you go. Um, done. There we go. I've dedicated my life to serving others. Excellent. I'm very happy with that. We're not going to be keeping the Jedi Knight armor for long. I say we do have some adaptive armor. And this character will be known as Valeris Row. I'm very happy. I'm not sure when they added this. But previously, you weren't able to add like second names with capitals. You used to have like to have a put like an apostrophe and have like that sort of name, which was fine for Twi'leks. But I like how they've added or allow you to have a second name now. You still have a legacy name, which all your characters on one server are, are like bound to. So, for example, my characters at the moment are bound to the Omegon legacy name. But yeah, our character will be known as Valeris Row. Now, as soon as I click pr uh, play, we will be going to the typical Star Wars storyline scroll or sprawl of introducing the event so far. Now, normally John Williams' theme, as amazing as it is, is copyrighted and mutes the entire video if I use it. So I'll be using something in the background instead and I will see you all once we're actually on the world of Typhon. So I will see you in just a moment. Let us begin.
Welcome to Tython, Padawan. Everyone at the temple is looking forward to meeting you. Your former masters praise your combat skills. They say you're becoming an expert duelist. I'm sorry. I don't think we've been introduced. Sorry. Darren Weller, watchman of the training grounds. I greet new arrivals. Show them around. The Jedi Council will assign you a new master to oversee your final trials. You'll be tested in ways you can't imagine. But when you leave Tython, you'll know what it means to be a Jedi Knight. More importantly, you'll know yourself. I'm eager to face these trials. Where do I start? There's a speeder here that will take you to... Hang on. Getting an emergency signal. <laughs> Flesh Raiders? Armed with blasters? He must be mistaken. What are these things? Animals? Flesh Raiders are a species of hostile natives. They're smart enough to use tools and violent beyond reason. I'm sending every able-bodied Jedi down to the Padawan training grounds right away. Especially you. What makes me any better than the others? You've been trained for dangers like this. I know I can count on you. Take the speeder outside to the training grounds, push back the flesh raiders, and find out if they're really using advanced weapons. Go. I'll catch up with you after I alert the Jedi Council. May the Force be with you. Okay, and welcome back, everyone. So. Huh. Ah, it's actually remembered some of my key bindings. Uh, not all of them. Oh, well. It's actually kept my interface. It indeed it has. Excellent. Okay, and welcome to the game. This is how we're going to be seeing our character for quite some time. Obviously, Darren Rella here, the Watchman of the Training Grounds, has asked us to assist in dealing with Flesh Raiders, hostile natives that are attacking the Jedi Training Grounds themselves. We need to take a transport speeder, or kind of like a taxi service, normally piloted by droids, down to the gnarls where the training grounds happen to be. Now, I'll break this video here before we actually get into some gameplay. I will need to spend maybe five minutes going through some of the basic UI things that I'm going to be doing quite often and I don't need to constantly explain. Turn that off. There you go. And I'll go through various, like, character stats that are going to be important for Valeris here. But apart from that, um, hopefully we'll get into some gameplay, or we should get into some gameplay in the next video. And yeah, hopefully you'll all enjoy this uh, journey with me. As I say, feel free to comment if you so desire. Um, obviously let me know what you think, let me know obviously how it goes. And yeah. Obviously, this has been Anforth playing Star Wars The Old Republic, and I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, though, bye-bye now.